Good morning, and welcome to Bible in a Year, as today we are on day 119. Uh, yesterday, um, we had this done on the mountain, uh, on actually on Sunshine Mountain, and uh, just to show us that well, we can pray and read our Bible wherever, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where we go, God is always there. And uh, I thought that was special to be able to do that with you guys yesterday. And today we're uh, we're back in the office. And today we're going through day 119 as we continue to explore the uh, period of royal kingdoms. As we go through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and read about the greatest story, love story ever told. That between God and his people. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. And today we're going to be talking about 1 Samuel chapter 29 to 31 and Psalm number 18. Now, Psalm 18 is a psalm of David for the director of music, and it's a deliverance uh, psalm from uh, thanking God for the deliverance from him from Saul and his enemies. Uh, psalm 18, 19 says, He brought me forth into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. This is a very powerful truth that's being told here. When we allow the Lord to delight in us, things radically change. We don't need to earn the Lord's love. He already delights in us. So don't forget that. So this is a psalm of praise, praise to God. Now, 1 Samuel 29 to 31, uh, we see when David arrives in Ziklag, he discovers that the Amalekites have raided his city and taken the people away. Then he shows his wisdom in several ways. One of the ways he does this is he asks God if he and his men should pursue the Amalekites to retrieve their families and belongings. In his time of need, the first thing David does is ask for direction from the Lord. He has learned that that's always what he should do first, is pray. Uh, of his 600 men, 200 stop at the brook of Besser to rest, guarding their possessions. Some of those who go on to battle do not want to share any of the spoils with the ones who stay behind. David says that they all share the spoils because all 600 men served, 400 for fighting and 200 by guarding the baggage. This keeps his people united, aware that everyone serves a purpose in the camp. When David returns with the spoils, he presents to the elders, he, pre uh, he sends presents to the elders of Judah. Saul has been killed and David will soon be the next king of Israel. So these gifts to the elders show that he is taking care of them. David has a heart of a king. He prays before he acts, he gives gifts justly and generously, and he unites the tribes of Israel as one kingdom. It's a beautiful leader. Anyways, we'll read all about it um, uh, uh, in the text. Let's read together. Chapter 29. The Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel camped by the spring of Jezreel. As the Philistines' rulers marched with their units of a hundred and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with a quiche. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? A quiche replied, Is this not David, who is an officer of Saul, king of Israel? He has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with him and said, Send the men back that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle, or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men? Isn't this David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So Kish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I would be pleased to have you serve me. In the army. From the day you came to me until now, I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. But what have I done? asked David. What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord, the king? Kish answered, I know that you have been as uh, I know that you have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said, He must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early along with your maid, master servants who have come with you and leave in the morning as soon as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to, to go back to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Chapter 30 
David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it, and had already taken captive the women and all who were in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahanoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to Dave, brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and six hundred men with him came to Besser Ravine, where some stayed behind. For two hundred men were too exhausted to cross the ravine. But David and four hundred men continued to pursue. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisin. He ate to him was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, To whom do you belong, and where do you come from? He said, I am Egyptian, the slaves of the Amalekites. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. He raided the Negev of Carathonite and the territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and he burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, Swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. He led David down, and there they were, scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening and next day, and none of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks, herds, and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock, saying, This is David's plunder. Then David came to the two hundred men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at Besser Ravine. They came out to meet David and the people with him. As David and his men approached, he greeted them. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, Because they did not go out with us, they will not share with us the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and child and go. David replied, No, my brothers, you must not do that with that, <clears throat> that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and handed us over to the forces that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the men who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. David made this a statue and ordinance for Israel from that day on. When David arrived in Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here is a present for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemies. He sent it to those who were in Bethel, Ramoth, Negev, and Jadr, to those in Aror, Sifmoth, Ishtamoa, and Rachel, to those in the towns of Je Jeremelites and the Kenites, to those in Horma, Bor, Ashen, Athak, and Hebron, and to those in all other places where David and his men had roamed. Chapter 31 now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines pressed hard after Saul and his sons, and they killed his son Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run through me. Run me through. Or these circumcised fellows would come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it, so Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, 
he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites along the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled, and that Saul and his son had died, they abandoned their towns and fled. And the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head and stripped off his armor, and they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols, and amongst the people they put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreth and fastened his body to the walls of Beth Shan. When the people of Gabesh Gilead heard of what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men journeyed through the night to Beth Shan. They took down the bodies of Saul and his sons from the walls of Beth Shan and went to Jebesh, where they bur burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under tamarack trees at, Je at Jebesh, and they fasted seven days. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Psalm chapter 18. For the director of music, of David the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hands of all enemies and from the hands of Saul. He said, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God and my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The cord of death entangles me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundation of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced. With hailstones and bolts of lightning, the Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies. Great bolts of lightning and routed them. The valley of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from my foes who were too strong for me. They too confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to his cleanliness of my hands in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, O Lord, kept my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help I can advance against a troop. With my God I can scale a wall. As for God, his ways is perfect. The wisdom of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is the rock except for our God? It is God who arms me for strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath my me that my ankles do not turn. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them as they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their back in flight, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I bet them. I beat them as fine as dust, born of the wind. 
I poured them out like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I do not know are subject to me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. Foreigners cringe before me. They all lose heart. They all come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalt me above the foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you amongst the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his kings great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever and evermore. Amen. This ends our second reading. We just, uh, we, along with David, exalt the name of the Lord. We uh, pray of his unfailing love. Uh, we, uh, we look to him for his kindness, for it endures forever. Uh, great is his faithfulness. Uh, we also reflect on our reading from 1 Samuel about David being amongst the Philistines and, uh, and eventually turning back uh, to the camp of Judah when Saul is killed. As they mourn seven days for Saul, for him and his son died. His faithful son, uh, Jonathan, who we... we uh, here has this pact with David. What a sweet, uh, sweet man. Uh, and the relationship between him and David is very sacred. We just, um, as we hear this, I always mourn the loss of uh, Jonathan. He, he just was such a special friend for David. Um, we, but we, at the same time, give thanks and praise to God that, that uh, David was delivered and that he was able to serve God in his full capacity as king. Uh, let us give thanks to God in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory. We give you thanks for the opportunity to listen to your word and to see the end of Saul um, as your anointed one, David, was uh, became king, honored, and revealed. Uh, Lord, if we just ask that you please help us as your people who have been anointed, that we say yes to you, people who have been chosen by you, that we might be faithful to you. That our heart might be like that, not of Saul, but of David. For every one of us has a heart that can turn away. Ask that we might please keep you uh, in the shadow of your wings. Always keep us near your heart and never let us wander away. Let us die not alone or apart from you, but always that we might walk with you and that we might die in you. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today in Bible for Bible in a Year. Um, I ask that you might pray for me as we go through this journey, that I pray for you, that you might grow in the wisdom and fear and knowledge, understanding of the Lord your God. Have a blessed day.